Welcome to day 329. Um, let's get started. Uh, just a few points I want to make today uh, and talk about the overall reading of what you just got done doing. So um, in chapter 5, right off the bat in verse 2, it says, Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into his place of undeserved privilege, where we now stand. And we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. Okay, so the point behind this is that we understand that this, what we've gotten, is undeserved. Okay, no matter how good you are, we, we keep wanting to think that we deserve something. Either deserve to pay the penalty in some way by going through part of the tribulation or uh, being made to suffer in some way. Uh, so that we can say we've earned it or deserved it. And the point is, over and over and over again, nonstop, it says, we are getting something undeserved. And over and over and over again, through the whole Bible, through the whole thing here, this conversation, remember, it's a conversation. God is telling us we are all sinners. And because of his great love, he chose to save us. It is undeserved, plain and simple. Don't let, I mean, people have got to get past this, I deserve to be punished. Well, yes, okay, you deserve to be punished, but uh, you're over that now. You're past that. God saved you from it, so stop holding on to it. Chapter 5, verse 9. Get this through your head. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ... He will certainly save us from God's condemnation. <clears throat> Chapter 8, verse 1. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. Stop holding on to needing to be punished. Yes, we all deserve it. But I'm not going to be punished. So why would you hold on to that? Be free and act like you're free. Um... Chapter 6, verse 6. We now, uh, excuse me, we know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. End of story. And then it just goes on and on and on about this. You're no longer a slave to sin. Okay? You got to get past this. This, this thought process that keeps popping up into your head. You're no longer uh, a slave to sin. Verse 12, do not let sin control the way you live. Do not give in to sinful desires. Okay, he gives you a way out. Okay, and then we get into uh, chapter 7, and it's the struggle with sin, and the, um, the law reveals your sin. Uh, let's see here. Um <clears throat> verse 10 um so i just uh, in chapter 7 so i discovered that the law's commands which were supposed to bring life brought spiritual death instead why because sin brings or the law was there to show us our sin meaning we were sinning because the law was set and we were breaking the law the law is good we acknowledge that it's good because we realize we've done something wrong okay if it was bad, we wouldn't be acknowledging that we've done something wrong. And that go, he, Paul goes through that thought process and that abstract thinking of all of this. And um, in no way, shape, or form does it say that we, we should uh, uh, give in to sin by any stretch of imagination, that it's okay to sin. No, it's not. And Paul says this over and over and over again, okay? Um, verse 12 of chapter 8. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. For if you live by its dictates, you will die. But if through the power of the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. You are chosen. You're a child of God. You have a battle that's going on in between, inside you of the, the old self that is a sinful nature and the new, free, spiritual self. Okay? So that is always going to be there until death. Okay? So this brings on death. The sinful nature brings on death. Now, the spiritual uh, saving grace that God gives us is that we will live after our, our earthly bodies die. Of course, we're all hoping for the rapture so that we all be transformed and not have to die. Um, but it is what it is, guys. 
Um, one last <clears throat> thing, I, I try to wrap my mind around this and, and explain this to you. Who would you be willing to die for? In our reading today, it said this somewhere, and I went back to try to find it, and I just couldn't quite find it. So let me make sure I get this right. Who are you willing to die for, if anybody? Are you willing to die for anybody? Are you willing to die for your 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 children because you know they're your children and you know they're good and and you just you don't want them to suffer? Are you willing to die uh, for them? And maybe so. And I hope so. That that's a wonderful thing. No greater love has he that. He lays down his life for his friends, um, and that was Jesus. So if you're willing to die only for your child or someone who is really, really good, what's that say about God's love for you? Because he laid his child's life down for you while you were still a sinner. Think about that one. That's how much God loves you and how much undeserved grace he gives us. And that's an awesome, awesome thought. Whether we wanted it or not, he gave it to us. So it's a cool thing. That, this all goes into Revelation because we are saved from that time of trouble. There's no condemnation for us. Okay, that's your day 329. I'll see you tomorrow.